We're talking about drilling a pipe just beneath the surface and finding you get fantastic sources of natural heat. I'm simply talking about heat exchangers, which is a technology that, uh, that you know far better than I do. Um, I'm, I'm talking about uh, the refrigeration technology put into reverse in some places to heat and cool using the same system, same pipe, um, and uh, the economics are blissfully beautiful. We get a payback period of 15 years, so we can build it into the capital cost. It adds to the capital value of the buildings we build anyway uh, at a very marginal, uh, it's a very marginal additional cost. Um, and so every pound is locked up there in capital, and we get all the money back anyway in the electricity we generate. So it's a complete no-brainer. What would be the reason for not doing it? I can't think of one. If, you, if, you, if you've got the geological formations where you can do it, and even in places like Sweden, which where most of the houses are built on solid rock, 70% of all new buildings have it because of government regulation. 45% of all new buildings in New Zealand have already got geothermal. Uh, we've got 30% um, of all new buildings in Switzerland have got geothermal, and 0% of buildings in the UK have got geothermal, and what percentage in Australia have got geothermal? Put your hands up if you recently installed a geothermal unit in your, one of your buildings. It's basically nearly zero. So you've all got token examples. Well, one or two of you have got token examples, and you all know of someone who knows someone else that's working on one. But it's just token experiments. Could this revolutionize things? Oh, yes, it could. Um, it wouldn't do much for the power problem, because, of course, it causes brownout straight away. Why is that? Because it's, you stop burning coal and oil and gas, especially oil and gas, to heat buildings, and we start putting all of the heat load onto the electricity system. And even though you do save up to 50% of the, the, the energy cost, nevertheless, it's the poor old generators that are having to bail you out, and all your heat is coming from the local power station, basically. And that is a challenge in terms of electricity generation. So it would put a tremendous stress on your national grid right now, but it's, I have to say it's the way to go. Um, it's, it's, uh, and uh, and uh, if, if I was commissioning, if I was involved with architects in designing any kind of a building, high rise, low rise, I don't care what rise it is, and, I hadn't, and they hadn't built in geothermal, I'd want a good reason why. To say, why on earth are we building a last century system in here? And you know geothermal works in a different way. To be most efficient, it's using warm water system rather than hot water system. So the whole building needs to be designed around it. Um, so uh, I think it's, we're going to, it's an area we're going to say a huge amount more about. And uh, I think we should be, I think, uh, I mean, why, should, why should New Zealand have 45% of new buildings and not Australia? So uh, I think it's a very exciting technology. And I think that if you are a company uh, looking for a major new business to get into, I would say it would be geothermal. You might say, yes, but we also need a bit of government action. I think that's an example where the government can, would, would, can be led by the industry. If the government, if a state was to insist on 45% of all new homes having geothermal, it would cause a crisis tomorrow. Why? Because there are not present in this room enough geothermal companies, correct? There aren't. So it requires a cooperation. It requires, I think, a, a conversation from ARBS to government saying, we as players are committed to going huge big time into geothermal provision, but we're not going to, do, we need two years to gear up, but we're not going to gear up for it unless you as government are committed to promoting it as part of a national program.